In this video, we're going to explore how you can do in Chart.js and how you can adjust or modify a legend completely in Chart.js. So this is one of our customers' questions, and uh, sorry, or our viewers' questions. And what we are going to do here, and this is very important, we're going to use in Chart.js version 2.9.x, and if, if ever you are in a different Chart.js version, no problems at all, probably you can use this as well, as this function will probably not be removed in Chart for Chart.js version 3.0. Probably it will be enhanced or even will, will give you some more features, which I truly hope because it's not that clear right now this Chart Chart.js version 2.9. And what we're going to do is basically this. We're going to create a HTML version of the legend that we have here. So what we want to do is this legend will be, or basically we're going to get this data and we're going to make our own version of the legend here. Very important. This means, and this is a very big warning here, it will not, this is not a function that is right off the bat available. Meaning that we have to really code step by step and knowing Chart.js is a JavaScript language, meaning that we use, we can use JavaScript to create it. All right, to do this, let's start with the basics. What do we need to know? We're going to use a option here. This is called the legend callback function. So if you see here, if you go to the legend on chartjs.org, Scroll down all to the bottom, and then you will find here the HTML legend. So basically, what we're going to do is create a HTML version of our legend. And we will generate this legend, but the function is called the legend callback. So this is very important. And you can see this is basically the code here for legend callback. This is it. You say, well, what is it here? Nothing more. We're going to work on this. And now we, that's why you need to know really uh, JavaScript for this. And if you're scared or you're worried about it, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how. Let's start with the basics. And understanding if you only do a HTML version here, you will need CSS. I have CSS ready, but I will show you that later on, as you can see here below. However, what we're going to do here is first figuring out to create our chart.js or our legend. So what we want to do first is, if we go back here, we're going to hide our existing one. We don't want to have this existing one. There's no need for that. So we say here in the options, we say legend, column false. Once we did that, you can save this, refresh, there you are. So now we remove the legend. And what we want to do is we want to, wherever you want to put it, depends on yourself because this will be essentially a HTML version of the legend. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this code here. Basically this code we can copy, go back here, and then we say comma, oh, comma, not a dot, and then in here, we're going to paste this option here. All right, so the moment we did this, of course, nothing happens. Why we are not ready yet to do anything, but it's a plane now. So if we go back here, let's go back here, refresh, nothing happens. All right, so this is the starting point. From this point on, we're going to start and write our code. Because right now we're saying, okay, we have a legend callback function, but what are we going to put in here? So let's start with that. So what do you want in here? Well, basically the following. We want to make sure that, first of all, if we have the legend, there should be a unordered list. So we're going to say here variable ul for unvariable, for un, uh, what do you call it, unordered list equals, and then we say here document dot create element, and then the creation of this element will be, of course, the unordered the list. There we are. So the reason why we're doing this is basically we want to put in a list of these labels here, every one of those. So once we have that, we have this now set in place. The next part is what we want to do is we want to make sure we can extract the values out. And what I'm talking about, the values are eventually, not, not this one, we'll do that later on, but we're going to check this or that one, any of these, it doesn't matter. In our case, we'll just get the border color. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this this value of the border colors is becoming our value that we'll be using as a color for our chart. So for that, what we need to do is we make here first a new variable and we say here border color equals. And from there on, what we need to do is we need to pinpoint the border color. To do this, we need to do the following. What we're going to say first is the chart. And why chart is basically this is the chart here. We say chart. 
chart dot and once we get the chart here from that moment on where are we going well we want to get it from the data and in the data we go to data sets and in the data sets we are going to border color so we say here chart dot data dot and here we're going to select data sets and the data sets in this case is the num number one the first one remember if you are with a uh, for example with this you can add multiple data sets in here so what we want to do is we want to pinpoint only the first one here so to do that we say here the first array right this is the first array of the data set if ever you have another one it would be array number two meaning if you have multiple uh what do you call that uh multi multiple no sorry multiple donut charts in one it's a multi pie chart or multi donut chart right all right that's not necessary but if you, if you would do that it would be like this here that you will have that copy you'll copy all of this data in here but that's not important for now all right so once we have that then we say dot and then here we say dot border color and the border color will be of course capitalized here as you see matching this all right so once you have that we need to extract the next value so what we want more besides the border color well if you want our legend it should basically show color it should show the color of the, the things like a dot or a square it should have the name and it should have of course our data here so we're going to get also the data values so there will be name and of course data values we're going to get the name on the last one because we're going to use a special function for that but what we will do is we will pinpoint now the data itself so we say here then we say here data value equals and then we select where we want to go same story chart dot data dot data sets and then we say here again zero and then we say here dot uh, data meaning our values here once we did that we're done here so now we have this part so now we're going to use a function and in this function we're basically going to target the labels here as you can see these are the labels because these are the names of every branch that is selling the quantity of milk tea all right so what we're going to do here is we go back here and then in there we're going to type in the following we'll say chart dot data dot labels because we're targeting the labels remember and and not data sets why because the labels are above here so it's basically here chart then data labels all right now let's go back here labels and then in here we say dot again for each because right this is like an array because we have we are going to count every one of them we're going to look through the value and there's in total three values as you can see there's three labels and there's also three data and there's three background colors so we have exactly everything what we need so and then in here we'll make the following and then we, we open parentheses and then we say function and again open parentheses they say label so for every label comma we will have an index number right so that's that's the number in the counting of it and once we did that we have here brackets curly brackets and then just to make sure we have here this double we have to remove that one and then what i'm going to do is we're going to close this bracket as well that's uh, closing parenting and a semicolon and then between here we're going to put in basically the command to create a unordered list so in here now we can put in the following as we as for every item we will have to look to a list item so what we will do is in the ul that we created we say dot inner html to command we're going to add some or we will inject html in this specific item and then we say plus equal so for every item and then we have a back tick here back tick all right so between here we will have all the html text so to do that i'll just put in here between and then in here we will say list item so for every one item we will find a list item and we have a closing list item 
and then in here you will have a span and in this span we will take the style equals let me say here background color or you can take background whatever you want so what is the background color so the background color will be a command here here or basically this value here so we're going to say that so how will we do that basically this we say here dollar sign and then we have the curly brackets so between here we put in a variable and this will be border color what we already have because that's basically the on here and then we say index why index basically this we give the variable border color and then we have the variable index so once we have this semicolon, my column close we can close the span as well and then what do we want for well we want to have the data value or we want to have uh, the value that we want to extract so basically here we can do exactly the same what we do first is let's say we will get the text right we want this one as we say for example this basically we want to see this and then we want to see value if ever you know, one two three or two thousand three hundred that's what we want to see so to do this we do the following because we have here as well the labels we already pinpointed the labels and we say every label name or the labels has the name label so don't don't mistake in this regarding with this right it's ready to be pointed here but we just rename the labels to label all right so here exactly the same we say dollar sign then curly brackets then we say label and here we have the label exactly the same you can go here and say index so now we have this what we can do more is exactly the same but then for the data value again that dollar sign and then we have again our curly brackets and then we say data value and then our data value is index so now we have this and then we're almost done now we're going here to the back tick and this back tick is a closing back tick so now we are done here and what we want to do here is the following we want to indicate here that this should return the ul.auto right html semicolon so once we have this basically it indicates that now we're done we're closing this part we have to store this will eventually be injected in a specific html div so at the very end because basically this now is done it understands everything we want here at the bottom we're going to put in will be inserted in a specific div that we're going to give it as well so we say the following here say legend dot inner html equals the context yeah, or the CTX. So if you wonder what the CTX basically CTX is just the variable we started here with. This is the starting point. So here as well, CTX dot generate legend, which is a command from chart.js. So we did this. And now we have this. The only thing what we want to do is we want to figure out where would we like to insert the diff with all this precious data. So what we can do is basically here, we can put it, let's say, if we want to put it here up, so let's go back here. If we want to put it here above, well, we can do this here. We say a div, then id equals, and what will be id name? id name will be legend. So in this case, legend. Let's store it here. Once we store this here, refresh. You can see we get we're getting now values and you can see the values here let's see if this is all correct you can see the branch branch and branch but somehow something is not showing up correctly so let's double check this what are we, what are we missing or how can we solve this most likely here the labels are probably incorrect let's go to remove this because the labels are already set as so we don't have to basically what i do is the index here was double it, which creates an error within the system. There you are. This makes this makes sense. All right. 
So once we have this, we're almost done. We're going to look at the colors. Let's see what happened with the colors. But if you look here right now, and you're going to search here, you will see that there is already something. Background is uh, light green, and you can see your background color. There you are. The background color, of course, I'm trying to make my own version of it, which is not the right way. We have to do this. And once we save this, go back here, let's refresh, there we are. So now we have this, and maybe you say, well, okay, this is nice, I want it better. Well, you can, you can control the position. If I scroll down here, I will show you here, this is basically a pre-made code here, where we can control this. And this could be like 12 by 12, we will do 12 by 12, what happened here, we get squares, you can make it circles, you can make it anything you want, but also here more specifically, uh, let's go back here. Where are we? In here, we can also say here. Let me say style equals text align. And then here we can say center. Oh, sorry, a left name. It's a left, so we're pushing it to the left side. There we are. So that looks a bit more better. You can do more with it. You can play around with it. You can make the text more bigger. Let's say here. Um, we have the labels so let's put the labels in strong all right let's save this refresh now we have our options here and you can play around with it but this is really the way how we can do it it's slightly more complicated slightly more challenging and there's a downside here or not really a downside you can see if i click here it does not respond and the reason why it doesn't respond is we need to set this up as well that will be for another video but at least now you have an understanding how you can really control and manipulate your own legend. And this should give you at least a starting point to get started with this. So uh, to make sure here with this, you can see here, this is targeted on legend. So to understand that this here, you can see we have the legend ID. And this is the unordered list. The unordered list matching here is because we are here adding the unordered list we could do here as well a specific a span it would be basically no difference you would have a different design for that so then you have to readjust this but that's basically how you can work with it because right now if you look here at the codes if i open up again the developer tab and look here what really happens is we created a separate uh, unordered list here within the div id legend so you give it an id so you can pinpoint these specifically. That is why if you do the CSS here, which I just had it ready to save some time, legend, uh, legend, and then in the legend ID, this URL, uh, unordered list must show the following design. And this is for the list item with the span, etc., etc. So if you have any questions regarding to this, just let me know. I hope this will help you out more better. And if you like videos like this and you do enjoy them, check out my Udemy course, which goes deeper in Chart.js itself. And if you have questions, just put them in the comment section below. And if you want to check out my Udemy course, check them out in the description box.